There are 206 bones in a human skeleton and 319 in an average dog skeleton. That's a lot of bones. So our challenge is to identify all of them and how are we going to begin to do that. This video is all about how do we identify bones? Where do we start? What are the things we look for? How do we do it? So how do we begin to identify a bone? Well, the first thing we want to keep in mind is that form follows function. So what do we mean when we say that form follows function? Take this fox, for example. A fox walks on four legs, so a fox and most animals are quadrupeds. And that generally means that their arms are the same length as their legs. If we move to a human, however, a human is a biped. It walks on two legs, so its arms are going to be shorter than its legs. And that's one very general example of how form follows function. We can look at it in a different way, too. We can look at the general shape of bones. So in the body, we have flat bones, we have irregular bones, and we have long bones. This femur is a good example of a long bone. Now on this long bone, you'll also notice that it has a rounded bit at the proximal end. So it has a rounded morphology. That rounded bit needs to form a ball and socket joint. It needs to fit into something. So if we take this kangaroo pelvis and we look at the acetabulum, which is this hip joint right here, we can fit the head of the femur into the acetabulum and that forms the ball and socket joint. And that's another classic example of the way that form follows function. You need a ball and socket joint to have that hip rotation to allow an individual to move. And so you have a classic morphology where you have a ball on the end of one bone and it fits into um, a receptacle, for lack of a better word, on a second bone. And we find that on every single bone in the body. So we can loosely divide all of the bones in the human body into three main groups. Long bones, uh, irregular bones, and flat bones. Limb bones are long bones. So if we look at the fox again, we can see that its forelimbs and its hind limbs are made up of long bones. Similarly, we go over to the human, and your arms and your legs are also long bones. They're the limb bones. And the great thing about knowing that something is a long bone, a flat bone, or an irregular bone is that those bones will look similar in different species. So you may not know the species, but the bones are going to look very similar. So in my left hand, I have the femur or the upper leg bone of a kangaroo, and in my right hand, there's the femur of a cow. Different species, they look slightly different, but the major morphology, the major shape of the bone is the same, and that comes back to having a similar function. So we've talked about uh, long bones. The other kind of bones are flat bones and irregular bones. So if we come back to the fox and we look at the scapula, which is its shoulder blade, that's a good example of a flat bone. You can see right here that the bone is flat. We can also see examples of irregular bones on this fox skeleton, and that is in the vertebra. Here's another example of a vertebra. So that forms your spinal column, and that's an irregularly shaped bone. If we come over to a human once again, a good example of a flat bone on a human could be your pelvis, that's the inside of your hip. And then an irregular bone on a human would also be your spine or your vertebra, just as we showed you on the dog. We can also look at an isolated example of a scapula. So this is a shoulder blade. This is from a goat. And this is another example of a flat bone. Now, if we want to bring everything together that we've just talked about, a flat bone can articulate with the long bone. So we look at this flat bone and we see that it has a little section called the glenoid fossa that looks like something might fit into that. So we can come back to our long bone and our ball and socket joint, and we can fit it all together and we can see the, the way a long bone flits into a flat bone and forms a ball and socket joint, and the way that morphology lets us know what kind of bone we might have. So in addition to knowing what kind of bone we have, flat bone, irregular bone, long bone, we can look at different parts of every bone to try and look for those parts of the bone that are diagnostic. And when we say diagnostic, what we're talking about is 
identifiable. So often in archaeology, we're not faced, we're not so lucky as to have a complete bone. Lots of times they're very smashed up. That's okay, because on each bone we have diagnostic parts. Those parts are generally the ends or the parts where one bit of the bone articulates with another bone. So for example, on this cow femur that I have in my hand, you see this big, broad um, bit that looks like it forms a joint. Well, this forms a joint for the knee. So this is the, what we would call the distal end of the femur, and it forms the knee joint. And even if you didn't know it was a femur and you didn't know it formed the knee joint, you can see by this smooth surface that something needs to articulate here. We can also flip this over and we can look at the posterior side of this and we can see smooth articular surfaces where we know another bone needs to articulate. And once you start looking at these a lot, the more you look at them, the better you'll get at saying, well, this looks like a femur or this looks like a humerus. But what I'm trying to show you here is that you don't need to know that necessarily, but what you need to know is that it's an end of a bone and it forms a joint with another bone. There are other bits of the bone we can look at too. Let's say we only had the shaft or the mid part of the bone. What we see on the back is this very rough spot. The rough spots on uh, long bones are often places where muscles attach. So this forms the attachment for quite a large muscle. So even if we didn't know that this was a cow, we know it was something that had quite large muscles that probably was pretty heavy. So we can begin to use a series of clues to deduce what we have. And that's a lot of what goes into identifying a bone. It's a process of elimination. So we look at the different parts we might have. We know this is an articular surface. We know from the ball on this proximal end that that's an articular surface. And then we begin this process of deduction and we say, well, is it an upper limb bone, a lower limb bone? Does it fit into a shoulder joint or a hip joint? Um, do we see any roughened muscle attachments that might help us to identify the species. And the great thing about um, different species is that while the general form is the same, and so what I mean by that is the general morphology of the bones are the same, so I come back to this kangaroo and the cow, there are parts on each of these bones that are unique to a kangaroo and to a cow. And so just looking at it without knowing very much, you can see that the proximal ends, and that's this bit up here, they're slightly different morphologically. They have slightly different shape. And once we know that and we can begin to compare them to pictures or to comparative specimens, we can begin to identify what type of species we have. When you first begin to study zooarchaeology, it can seem like an insurmountable task. There are 206 bones in a human body, 319 in a dog or a fox, and many more in many other species. But what I hope this short video has shown you is that this task is not insurmountable. You can begin by looking at what kind of bone do you have? Is it a long bone, a flat bone, an irregular bone? Do you see any distinguishing morphological characteristics on that bone that can give you a clue as to the function of the bone? Was it weight bearing? Did it form a ball and socket joint? What are the defining morphological characteristics that tell you what kind of bone you have? Once you've figured that out, once you know you have a femur or a humerus or a radius, you can begin to look at those traits that distinguish individual species. And I promise you that after a few weeks looking at all of this, you will be able to say, I have a human femur or this is a dog. So when we are faced with a bone that we can't identify, let's keep in mind that form follows function and we'll start from there.